data is not only a description of the world, but it also shapes the world. I'm interested in the connection between design, data and governance. How do we read the city? How do we make sense? How do we orient ourselves in the city? I was always interested also in the questions of, you know, those invisible things that we don't see, the electricity grid or the waste systems or infrastructure, all these different ways how we collect and manipulate data. What does that mean for how we shape society and how society shapes us? I'm faculty here at Northeastern University in Boston. I'm on the one hand in a design department, but on the other hand, I'm also in a public policy program. My work connects or tries to connect those two worlds, looking at how design shapes policy. You know, if I make a map of Boston, I have to make a decision what to put on this map and how to represent it. But if then everyone in Boston has to use this map, they would start seeing the environment through the categories of this map and use the map as a basis for their decisions. So data always kind of reinserts itself into the world. When we have a data set, it often develops a life on its own. You know, visualization is something that always happens after a data set already exists. I'm interested in what happens before a data set exists. Somehow in all of my projects I start with data sets, but then I kind of start moving upstream and try to figure out how these data sets actually take shape. Illinois Array is an urban sensing project uh, I worked on together with Philips and the city of LA. And we were interested in getting a very detailed understanding of the noise scape in, in all its kind of dynamics. We basically attach noise sensors that we specifically designed for this project on uh, street lamps and made this array of uh, about 30 sensors that, that covered streets pretty much in the center of LA. We tried out different things. So one thing was to understand the relationship between architecture and noise. We also looked at, you know, how certain events, for example, waste pickup, you know, what, what kind of signatures would that leave in the noise scape. So it was a very exploratory, playful approach that we analyzed and, and visualized in, in different ways. I've known Dietmar Offenhuber for as long as I can remember. Uh, we've collaborated on a number of projects around urbanization, urbanism, smart cities, data in cities. I think what connects our work is really this, this holistic thinking about the sensory experience. So a lot of what we like to talk about is kind of how the senses in the city are heightened or are experienced. Cities are for people. Cities are for people to experience. They're sort of generating data. I mean, people are generators of data just through their movement. And, and through the interaction with infrastructure, you can then sort of get a better picture of what's actually going on. So making the infrastructure a participant, in a way, in this whole dance of city life is something that I think Dietmar really has taken to the next level. Can data take control? Data has always been an instrument of political power and of governance. Whoever decides about the conventions of data, this is usually the person who calls the shots. In the past, this might have been the king, or now in the future, it might be an algorithm. My work is based on the premise that in a democracy, just negotiating protocols and categories of data collection uh, is also an important part of civic discourse. This is just a topic that, in a way, can never be exhausted. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.